So, some more apple pie this week. I know I look like an alcoholic. I'm not, I promise. I just socially drink and this is a social occasion for me. I've not touched that apple pie since the last time I had some. So, and you saw when that was. I hope that you feel like this is a social event. So grab yourself a drink and pull up a chair. Hey guys, Chevy Rel here. It's been a minute. I know it's been a minute. And actually you will be seeing this probably a week after I record it. I have some travel coming up. I thought it would be perfect for me to record and then edit while I was away and then pop it up when I get home. If you don't know who I am, there's a little eye up in the whatchamadingy. You can click that. And if not, let's get on to the stuff. Shall we? Finished objects. One finished object I do not have here presently. I will insert a picture like here. It is my monster, Hugo, the couch potato monster. Pattern is by Rebecca Danger in her book that I own and I've knit multiple monsters from that I can't remember the name of. I'll insert a picture of it too. If you remember from my last episode, that monster was knit for my sister who has it. And she's the one who sent me a picture of it because I forgot to take a picture of him. I knit that with critical sheep yarn in a colorway that she calls warrior, which was made specifically for Operation Chemo Comfort. So I'll go ahead and link them if you wanna know more about them. As you remember from the last episode, uh, my sister recently lost her mom due to cancer, and it was the day after that that I saw that yarn, and it spoke to me, and I had to make it. So my sister is now the proud owner of Hugo the Couch Potato Monster. My next finished object, is a tissue box cover. I have wanted one of these for a while. We were out of tissues. They are not Kleenex. FYI, I am, I am team puff all the way. I like the puffs. Dan brought home some tissues because we were out and the box was super ugly and it did not match my decor. Then I had the idea to knit Excuse me, crochet. This is crocheted. See them double crochets right there? Crochet uh, tissue cover. I will be making another one of these. I have another tissue box that I also would like to cover. So I will link the pattern. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I want to say it's the granny tissue box cover. I could be wrong. It's granny something. If you put in tissue, granny tissue free, it'll come up, but I will definitely link it. The yarn that I used for this is Bernay Mosaic. I just dug in my, in my kind of cheapy stash. This is really weird, you guys, but it's 100% acrylic. It feels like Noro. I have crocheted with Nora once before. I made uh, my mat for my tarot deck out of Noro and I crocheted it. It feels just like that. It's weird. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Last weekend, no, excuse me, not last weekend. It would have been two weekends ago, which by the time you see this will be three weekends ago. What's the date today? Today is Monday the 23rd, so. I just totally outed myself on how way late you y'all are gonna see this. We stayed home for the weekend and I got so much done in my craft room. It Not a whole lot to show you, but it was little stuff that I'd been meaning to do. I sewed buttons on some things. Uh, Dan's jean pocket had a hole in it and I cut it out and re-sewed, like sewed in a new pocket. Uh, little stuff like that. I have been needing a new needle case. Now that there's anything wrong with the case that I have, which is chicken boots, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have seen these. I love this case. 
I have a set of interchangeables from Knit Picks. I want to try the Zings really bad. They look pretty cool. So that's on the list. But I have a set of interchangeable Knit Picks that I've had forever. They work just great for me. They're fine. Maybe it's one of those you don't know what you're missing because you don't know what you're missing. But I really do have no complaints over the Knit Picks. They could have for me a sharper point for all of you who follow me on instagram you probably saw that i was switching out my socks uh for the airplane and i was using my friend diana's signatures which of course i would not want to get confiscated on an airplane so i switched them over to my nitpicks and i did a side by side of the tips of those i love the tip of the signature but i will tell you the metal on the nitpicks is a lot smoother it's weird how, I don't know, it's weird. Here's the thing with my chicken boots case. So any of y'all who have not heard of chicken boots, go check out, They're, they are super well made. They have all sorts of different kinds of cases and I really, really like this one. So you have two pockets. As you can see, I have my cables just wound in there. In a perfect world, I think it would be really cool if one of these was a zipper. Maybe this back one, because see, you could see, then I could zip that those in and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be, I mean, you know, in a perfect world. I've had this case probably for what is years now. So I have all my interchangeables in here. The thing with this, is an interchangeable set, at least for knit picks, starts at a size four. So what I was doing is I was winding all my cords in here as well as my fixed circulars. So then the needles would be like, I'd roll them up and the needles would be diagonal and you'd have to like push them down to close it. And I, I was just, I was sick of fighting it. So I've been on the hunt for a needle case for a while and I just honestly was not in love with any of the circular cases that I found. For the fixed circulars. So I got on the YouTubes and while I am not what one would call anywhere close to a great sewer, I can sew some things. I have a machine. So I made my own case. I don't know if y'all remember when I went to that uh, quilting retreat with Mama Jean. They had a table there. It was kind of like a garage sale between them. And this lady had this fabric here for 50 cents. So sold. It's a roll. I will link the tutorial that I found for this. It was not for circular needles. It was for crafting tools, but it works great for circular needles. Ta-da! It fits right down in those little pockets all snug. I even have a few pockets that don't have anything in them. When I was putting these in here, I have three sets of like size twos. I don't know if I just couldn't find them and kept buying more. I had no idea that I had that many size twos. The way it works is you flip this down and you roll it. Oh, well, it works a lot better when it's laying flat. You roll it and you tie it. Now, this obviously is a ribbon that's meant for like around a chair or something to hide the edges. So it's probably not an ideal ribbon for this, but the super cool thing about it, <sighs> I'm such a mess, is whatever that, whatever the decorative is, it just, it stays. So really I could cut these even shorter because the, it stays. I don't have to tie it in a bow or anything. So that's an FO. That's all for my FOs. Now we're on to whips, y'all. 
I'm hoping this will go fairly fast. My Wanderers, you've all seen these. If you haven't and you're interested, you can get some information on my past episodes. Last week I was here. I got that much done. During Roseanne, I don't know if I told you guys, we were watching Roseanne from beginning to end, like from season one to season nine, because I'm super excited about the new one and I won't let myself watch the new one until I've finished all the seasons of the first round of Roseanne. Yeah, season nine, like this whole episode was like some super uber duper dumb episode. Season nine is just, I don't even know if I can make it through you guys. So I haven't seen the new Roseanne yet. I'm kind of excited about it. Old school Roseanne is definitely where it's at. I feel like it started getting weird around season six. Anyway, those are my wanderers. That yarn is Harrisburg. No, I do that every, yeah. Harrisburg, Harrisville, Harrisville. I do that every time. Harrisville Designs Yarn. That yarn is amazing. It's in grass and charcoal and it'll be linked. My exceedingly vanilla socks, which is in the fawn and the fox bag with my owls on it. I like it, way mucho. I got this much done on the second sock. Right there's my marker, so I've gotten Yay done, that's all I've worked on. Exceedingly Vanilla Sock by Amanda Steck. She was having a knit along, which was over on the 15th. I missed. She does the 10,000 Stitches podcast, go check that out. I am also doing a plain old normal Vanilla Sock recipe. My recipe is Judy's Magic Cast On, two at a time, Fish Lips Kiss Heel, I've gotten this much done since the last time y'all saw it. I'm really close to the heels. So the next time you see this, it will probably be after the heels are done. I am taking this with me on my trip. This is Simply Socks Post Yarn. The colorway is amazing. And I wanna say it's Cor Corydale. I don't know, get on their website, Simply Socks Yarn. They rock, post stripe and post is P-O-S-T-E in the snowflake colorway. And as I've mentioned before, still in my Steel City ball sack. I love my ball sack. Also totally forgot to mention that my exceedingly vanilla socks, that yarn is Open Skies yarn, which will be linked. Then there is my Flamingo flavor. Last episode, I was calling it the flamingo. The reason that I was calling it the flamingo, if you look back at that last episode, the only word on the pattern, which I don't have with me right now, that you could see was flamingo. And that was because my printer is basically out of ink. So the word flavor is so light that you can't really see it. And when I was doing the show notes, I'm like, I thought there was more to that than flamingo. And then I was like, crap, it's the flamingo flavor. Well, then I was watching Lorelei, Handmade with Lorelei, who is also knitting the flamingo flavor. And she even mentioned it. And I'm like, it's, to I commented. I'm like, that was totally my fault. I misspoke. Which shouldn't be surprising to any of you. I was here. So I've gotten that much done. I will tell you, I've only ripped out once since the last time, which was last Sunday at knitting. I am almost back to where I was. I am... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is, this row is nine squares. Oops, square. Nine squares. I know my shapes real good. Nine triangles for this row. The next one will be 11 triangles, and that's when I will work up the sides. To be honest, I don't know why I keep putting that in my mouth. I did it the last time, too. Uh, to be honest, I have actually tried to slow down on this knit because I'm enjoying it so much, which I know sounds so totally stupid. <laughs> but I really like it and I kind of don't want it to be over. It's a lot of fun. If you like brioche, this is where it's at. That being said, it is not beginner brioche. You have increasing and decreasing 
hence me ripping out so much. There is a lot of attention that needs to be paid. Uh, the reason that I had to rip this out is last Saturday, April 21st, right? Yes, April 21st was the first ever national local yarn store day. Marina from Black Sheep Yarn and Fiber Arts in Noblesville, Indiana, got a hold of me. She said there was a bunch of stuff going on down at the store and invited me to come down if I was available. And I got my chores done. Cause let's face it, kids, even as adults, we have chores. Damn it. There's always laundry to fold or dishes to do. In my case, I had to pack for this trip I'm going on. But anyway, I busted a hump. I got it all done and I was able to hang out with them. We were down there, there was a bunch of people there. Oink Pigments had a trunk show going on. They had a bunch of food down there. It was just everybody talking yarny things and I was trying to increase and decrease brioche, which was probably really stupid <laughs> because then I ended up ripping out. But like I said, I enjoy it, so I don't, I don't really mind. I'm warm. Excuse me while I take off my jacket. So hopefully, if the stars align, next time you see that, I'll have 11 triangles, not squares, done and start working on the sides. I'm terrible today. That yarn, which I've already said, I kind of feel like I'm repeating myself, but then I feel like maybe people haven't seen the episode. Much like I said on the last episode, so I'm glazing over it quickly. Uh, the green yarn is Bad Amy Knits in her jungle, and the blue yarn is Malabrigo, dang it, Karen told me how to say it too. Mashita, maybe it's Mashita, in Storm, both singles. And I believe both 100% superwash merino. But I wouldn't bet on that. Y'all remember my crochet square blanket? Well, crochet square. It's not really a blanket. They're just some squares right now. I started another one. <laughs> there's, there's this much. I am using, this is also, uh, I believe, post stripe. I don't remember the colorway though. It is very Harry Potter-ish. So you'll, hope, hopefully that'll be done the next time I record. I just thought I'd show you I started it, right? It is technically a whip. My last whip. <laughs> I'm gonna crochet me a steering wheel cover. I mean, why stop at a tissue box cover, right? So I have this much. It is gray and black, and this is Knit Picks something that I had purchased for a commission a long time ago and just dug it out of my stash. I have no idea what it is. Washable acrylic maybe. Stroll, what's stroll? It might be stroll. I think it's a sport weight. The beautiful thing about crochet is you can just make it work. I did not mention on this, for all you crocheters, sorry if you are a knitter and are not a crocheter, but I must learn how to do all of the things. So that's why I know how to crochet. This right here, this is all double crochet. And I can say this because it's a free pattern. You chain like 18 stitches, you make it in the round, which is your tissue hole. Hashtag tissue hole. <laughs> so you crochet a chain of 18 and then it's just double crochets. And of course they tell you it's like chains and double crochets and yada yada. Well on the corner you do two double crochets in one with two chain and then two double crochets with the two chain. Then in the pattern it actually called for another increase round, which I did, and it was too big. So I ripped that out. Then for the body, is it the body for the box of the tissues? I'm saying body like on stuffies, like the tissue has a body. 
Anyway, uh, on the, the box part of it, you just do double crochets, no increases. So I did that. I, I took this top square down to, or rectangle, no, it's a square. I took this top square down to where it fit, and I started just doing all double crochets around. Well, then it was too big. It, like, flared out. So what I ended up doing is I... I did one less row than the pattern called for. And then when I did the body, I actually, which I don't know if you can see it, I did a decrease so that it fit the box snug. If the pattern doesn't work out for y'all as red, it is, in my opinion, a lot easier to alter crochet. You don't really notice it as much as you do say in stockinette like when you do a decrease in stockinette knitting you can clearly tell that it's there whereas this like you can't and i was in the car when i did this decrease i'm not even gonna lie i don't think i did it the way you're supposed to like the technical decrease i have no idea but I did the same thing on all of what I'm calling a de. It was a decrease. It took it down four stitches per round and it works. And in crochet, that's all that matters. It's a lot more forgiving, in my opinion. Y'all might feel differently. So that being said, well, I don't know. I didn't alter this. Why did I start saying that? Oh, because I had sport yarn and this called for DK or worsted, I think, and it it's just fine, or at least I think it's fine. Who knows? Maybe I'll put it on my steering wheel and it won't fit. I don't know. That's it for my whips. I'm going to work on some stuff. I feel really weird not having a sweater on the needles. I always have a sweater on the needles, and I have a lot of sweaters that I want to knit, but I also have a lot of shawls that I want to knit, and I have a lot of little stuff that I want to knit. So I feel like I want to take a break from knitting sweaters, especially because obviously the weather is not sweater weather anymore. I want to take some time and do some of the little things that I want to do. I have wanted to do this forever. So it's like super fun that I have it now. And the steering wheel cover, hello. DIY, that craft room day that I told you about. Y'all remember this? From my fiber share package, this is the paper that Kelly from Kelly Marie Yarns, who did the yarn with the Chevy Rail colorway. Y'all should go check her out. I'll link her. She was my fiber share partner and she wrapped all my stuff in this cool like old print. I had to save it knowing that I was going to do something with it. So I went ahead and did the first layer of what will eventually be uh, mixed media art. You're seeing the first layer of a future piece of art that will be hanging in the stuff room. Now we are on to other stuff. I have been a watcher of Squirrel Pie Productions since her very first episode. Tommy, she's one of my West Coast peeps. She is going to very soon have the pitter petter of little feet. She is having a kid cow, kid cow, kiddo cow. Dang, what's it called? I think it's a kid cow. Anyway, it's for kids. It's a cow and it's all kid stuff. So anything that you knit for a kid, maybe crochet too, I don't remember. But go check out her cow if you're knitting for kids. I think she has prizes and stuff. I had an idea on her last episode. She mentioned wanting, I think it's the bird of happiness. She made a little... Uh, octopus and she said that she loves the little stuffies and things and she wishes that she could make like a whole bunch of them and she wanted to make this I think it's bird of happiness I'll show a picture here it's a free pattern it's a super quick knit and she said that she wished that she could have like a whole bunch of them somewhere so I had an idea knitters as we all know and love are great at paying it forward tommy does 
a wonderful podcast and I almost feel like when we watch podcasts, they're our friends. And I thought it'd be cool, no obligation, but if y'all are feeling generous and you watch Squirrel Pie Productions and you thought about getting her a little something or would like to get her a little something, I am going to be collecting for her birds of happiness. It can be any weight of yarn, it can be any color, anything you want. I totally stole this idea. I believe my friend Diana's the one that came up with it and she, I don't know where she got it. It may be in the project pages of the Bird of Happiness, but our friend Tori had a baby. For those of you who have watched us from, watched us, us, like I'm... Just call me Sybil. <laughs> For those of you who have watched me from the beginning episodes, I actually did post a picture of baby Wren, who is our friend Tori's baby. I knit her a monster. Our knitting group knit her birds of happiness, and then Diana made them into a mobile for Tori to hang in Wren's nursery. And it was a super cute idea, depending on what the reception is. I'll, I plan on doing something. I don't know if I just send her a, a box of birds of happiness or if I make her a little mobile, but I thought it would be cool for us to uh, not only congratulate Tommy on this new venture in her world, but also as a thank you for taking the time out to share all of her cool stuff with us. If it's something you're interested in, go ahead and send me a message and I will send you an address. If you do plan on sending one, uh, again, I will link the pattern in the show notes. If you would put some sort of card or label with your Ravelry name, just so that way she kind of knows uh, who it came from. Of course, I know that this will not be a surprise to her if she, I don't know if she watches this or not. I know she likes things. I think she watches. So it won't be a surprise to her that it's happening, but what she gets will definitely be a surprise. Tommy is also the dyer behind Moonstone Dye Works. Her yarn colors are amazing. I actually won one of her giveaways before she started Moonstone Dye Works. When she first started dyeing yarn, she was just kind of playing around to see if she'd like it. I received one of her skeins. Oh, let I can show you. It's like right here. Okay, so this skein is one of her first. She did have her name. She, I have a little card. It's Moonstone Dye Works, and she calls this Vocorder. Is that what that says? Vocorder? Wait, mm, yeah, maybe? Uh, how, do, how, do, how do you say it, Tommy? Is it Vocorder? <laughs> I'm going to Google that word. I wonder if it's some like hip thing that I'm not cool enough to know what it is. Uh, 100% British BFL and it's 438 yards. So it's a nice size skein, but it's awesome and I've it's it's marinating in the stash. One place that you can check out Moonstone Dye Works in person, because she does have an Etsy shop. Again, it'll be linked. If you want to see it in person, Paige the Farmer. For <laughs> Paige, I called you a farmer. <laughs> Paige the Framer who owns Frame and Fiber, which is a yarn slash framing shop in New Jersey. She also has a podcast. It's a podcast, but it's also like vlog style as well. She does some cool things out and about in the world. There was one where she took us on a hike and she was trying to find sheds for all you non country people that would be antlers and she did find one. So it was kind of fun. And her husband, Paul Miller is on 
quite a bit. He's super funny. Hi, Paul Miller, if you're watching this. And I think that he and Dan would be like, like two peas in a pod if slash when they meet in real life. But Paige is carrying Moonstone Dye Works in her shop. So if you're in her area in New Jersey, you can go check that out for yourself. I highly suggest it. Throughout this venture of the podcasting world, uh, Paige is one of those people that I, I feel I can call a friend and I've never even met her. We did have a VKL one night, so I, I can say that I spoke to her face to face anyway. So it's, it's super cool how technology can bring us together. And then Paige is in New Jersey and Tommy is on the West Coast and somehow they hooked up for Paige to have Tommy's yarn. It's just like this full circle thing that's super cool. Recap. If you are interested in knitting a bird of happiness for Tommy, Squirrel Pie Productions, get a hold of me, I'll get you an address. If you don't watch her podcast, I suggest checking it out. She is having her first baby, which is what the bird of happiness is for. She is friends with Paige the Framer, who owns Frame and Fiber in New Jersey and actually has her yarn physically present in the store if you wanna see it. If not, check out her Etsy page. Paige the Framer has a podcast slash vlog. Go check that out as well. Next, I'm going to talk about something that I don't feel cool enough to talk about, if that makes any sense. So while I love fiber, and it's obviously my world, I am not, you can tell from my podcast, I'm, not good at designers. When somebody says a pattern, I always have to look it up to see what it is. You know, it'll be a pattern that everyone's knitting. And I'm like, what? Like they'll be talking about a Stephen West pattern or a Hohe pattern. And while I know who they are, I'm not good at knowing what those patterns are. Or when somebody's talking about yarn, I'm not good. For the longest time, I did not understand the whole Brooklyn Tweed thing. Then I went down to uh, Broad Ripple Knits and found out that Brooklyn Tweed's really hard to get. I saw some, I mean, because you have to be asked to carry that yarn. It's not like you can call as a yarn shop and say, hey, can, and I may have, I may be repeating myself. I may have said that on a past episode. I don't remember if I thought it or if I actually said it. But you have to be asked to carry their yarn. You can't just call them and say, hey, I'm a yarn shop and I want to have your yarn. So it is extra special when you find it. There is a lot of yarn like that. While I say I'm not, I don't know if I'm cool enough to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. I am attending the plucky pop-up that is going to be the first week in June in Hastings, Michigan. I know that Plucky is a big deal. I've heard people talk about Plucky being a big deal. I've never seen it in person. I subscribe to their newsletter, so I do get their newsletter. They're, co they're cousins. Where the hell did that come from? Their colorways are amazing. I'm super excited to check them out. Die Another Day, which is, I think I've talked about them before on the podcast as well. They are two friends who both die. They're from Canada. The one gal, and I feel bad. I watch them and I love their podcast, but I can't remember their names. I'll put their names in here. You know I terrible at that stuff. This is what I mean. This is what I'm talking about. I'm terrible at that stuff. I know who Plucky is. I, that's about as much as I know. One of the gals from Die Another Day went to a plucky, I think it might have been a retreat, because she spent the night, I want to say. Her husband surprised her with it. How cute is that? So she went on this plucky retreat. She said they put on a hell of a party. She had a fantastic time. So then I see that Plucky is having this pop-up. It's in Hastings, which is about two hours from us. It's June 1st. So of course, June 1st and 2nd, it's Friday, Friday and Saturday. I, I think it's 1st and 2nd. It'll be linked. 
So Dan and I, you know, are campers. We're gonna be camping. The knitters from my knitting group are going to go up for the day. It's open shopping for Friday and Saturday between certain hours. Then Friday night and Saturday night, they're having big shindigs. I'm probably gonna mess this up, but you'll, you'll see from the link what it is. Friday night was $60. Saturday night was $40, which they're probably both going to be sold out by the time you guys hear this. So I don't even know why I'm talking about it. But just so you know, uh, the Friday night, I couldn't decide between the two. One of them uh, came with like a yarn prize and I think there might have been dinner or something. Saturday night though, I know is $40 and it was more casual laid back, I think. There's movies and knitting. There is a plucky craft beer, which hello. You had me a craft beer. I attend knitting with my knitters at a coffee shop on Sunday. So I went, I was going to ask them. I'm chatting with my friend Lindsay. And I'm like, I can't decide which one to go to. One's for 60, one's for 40. One kind of seemed high, like uh, maybe a little fancier. I don't know. And then one was the more casual one. One comes with a yarny prize. The other one, or prize, a yarny thing. And then one comes with something else. I don't know. They both sounded super cool and like I wanted to go and I couldn't decide. So I wanted to talk to my knitters about it. My friend Lindsay pulls it up. She's like, well, Friday sold out. I was like, shit. <laughs> like, so I hurried up and got on. I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to Saturday then. So I'll be at the plucky pop up shindig Saturday night, whatever you got to buy tickets for if any of y'all are going. So I'm super excited about that. If any of you are in that area, we're going to be camping somewhere. That's Dan's department, not mine. Go ahead and get a hold of me and maybe we can knit around the campfire. That'd be fun. Those are the big yarny happenings that I have coming up. As you can see, I had no enabling this week. Between Black Swamp and Yarn Con, I really didn't need to buy anything that's basically it guys in my closing statement a friend crystal who is a crocheter texts me she's she's actually a co-worker of dan's and she crochets of course i think she watches hi crystal uh she crochets Dan told her I knit, so we have this yarny thing in common, so now we're friends, and it's sort of funny because we go back and forth, and Dan's like the middle person, so he just got to the point where he gave Crystal my phone number so that we can go back and forth amongst ourselves. She texts me, there is a thing called Fathom Events. I don't know how she found it. I also don't know if the dates are the same across the country, I wanna say they are. Certain movie theaters on, and these dates don't make any sense to me, April 29th, which is a Sunday, May 1st and May 2nd, which hopefully you'll be seeing this before May 1st and 2nd. I, I mean, I'm shooting to get this up on Monday, that, that Monday, next Monday, a week from today. Fingers crossed. If not, maybe I'll cut this all out. I don't know. But Labyrinth is playing on the big screen, people. What? If your kids have never seen it, or if your significant other has never seen it, and you love it as much as I do, I think you need a date night. It'll be linked. I hope you guys have a great world. Until the next time I see you, go ahead, thumbs up, subscribe, all that happy horse shit, and catch you on the next one. Later.